Hello everybody, this is Brandon again, Sidehill Ranch, and uh, I'm going to show you this upgrade that I just did to our uh, solar powered water pump where we're pumping water from the lake. I um, uploaded the video a little while ago about uh, about using our little hundred-ish dollar Chinese pump and a uh, 100 watt solar panel. I'm going to be upgrading this solar panel uh, to probably 275 to 300 ish range um, solar panel but uh, for now the 100 is doing good but before I upgrade that panel and make this pump work at 100% full capacity for quite a bit of the day I wanted to come up with a way to make the pump turn on and off based upon demand so I was gonna set up a um, a digital timer to turn on and off the electricity for the pump but instead I went and got a pressure switch a water pressure switch that you would normally install on like a well pump with a pressure tank uh, but the idea is the same and this is a 4060 sorry everybody about the wind but this is a 4060 um, uh, pressure tank switch so essentially what happens is is it will pump the water up to 60 psi and then uh, the switch will turn off and then if the water pressure goes below 40 the switch will you know turn back on so what this is going to do is is uh, put it right after the check valve the pump is pumping water in goes through the check valve I got this uh, pressure gauge here just for reference and I can keep an eye on it so right now the the pressure is pretty low the sun is going down it's in the evening so we don't have a ton of sun um, but it is pumping and it is pushing water up to the top of the hill and apparently it's only taken a little over 10 psi to to get the water over the hill and out all the drippers which is fine i mean it it, it uh you know pours out those drippers great i've actually got 50 Man, I've got more than 50. I've got 50 uh, cypress trees that are getting watered off of this right now. And then I've got five uh, live oaks that are in uh, pots. And about eight other miscellaneous plants in pots that are also getting watered. So 65-ish, over 60 um, drippers up there. And most of them are two uh, gallon per hour drippers. So, uh, so it, it's sending enough water. The demand is there. Uh, most of the stuff I have up there only needs about a gallon, and I, uh, about a gallon a day or a gallon every other day. But anyways, uh, long story short on that is the, uh, the water right now is pumping to the top. Now, I've got a timer that is on that valve going to the top, and it's just a regular old Home Depot timer. And I'm going to walk over there and let you see that. I got the uh, water line running along one of our fences. And here's a, here's a T that I've got going to something else. And right now I've got this timer. It's on manual right now. It's got three minutes left in manual mode. But what's happening is, is it's open and it's letting the water go to the top of the hill. So that when that opens or when that timer kicks off, it opens that line and relieves the pressure and lets that pressure flow up to the top and like i said we only need about 10 to 15 psi for that to work properly up top um which is way below the the 40 that would kick that pump on i'm going to put another one of those on this tee because my plan here is to water uphill one day and to another location another day uh, which is this break off so I'm gonna have two of these timers here so I can water a different location each day and if I wanted to do a different location like say one each day for three days I'd do another split off but for now that's all I needed we're gonna come back over here to the solar panel setup and like I said we're losing Sun so this 100 watt panel isn't gonna be putting out full and uh, but what you can see here is on this pressure switch 
you see the wires are wired in where the screws are well above that you've got these little plates here sorry it's on the cell phone camera so these little plates here uh, again if you know pressure switches then you'll know this but on these little plates if um, when that thing turns off in in three minutes or two minutes whatever it is left on it then it's gonna shut the water off then that's gonna start building back pressure on these hoses which should then start making this pressure gauge start kicking up higher and um, you know it will it's got to wait for that that timer to kick off but what happens then is these this top plate here once it hits 60 psi kicks up and it disconnects the electricity from the pump uh, you know it's like a disconnect between the solar panel and the pump and then since I have the check valve there it's gonna just hold that water pressure you know unless there's little tiny leaks here or there I mean there's a slight drip on that one and you know little things but it's not nothing big deal that's gonna really cause a problem um, but in theory it should hold that pressure all the way until another switch uh, down the um, hose opens up and relieves the pressure which makes this kick on again so um, right now I'm let me and like I said we're really losing Sun so I'm trying to get the most out of this I can um, so right now we're pumping through the main switch that goes up top and um, as soon as that switch turns off which it looks like it did because I don't know if you can see here but the pressure is slowly building we're at over 30 we're about 35 psi hopefully I have enough Sun to show you this okay we're up to 40 let me go back over here man we may not have enough Sun I'm trying come on it's slowly going I hear the pump still running but man we just ran out of Sun or not ran out of Sun but this panel isn't putting out as much voltage as it needs to to fully run that pump so I'm gonna hold this panel up in the air actually as you can see there goes pumps running again it's getting close to 60 I want to show the the pressure gauge watch when it hits 60 there it goes so now the solar panel and the pump has been disconnected because we hit 60 psi now as soon as that water pressure gauge or that that water switch the valve up there kicks on um, it's going to let that rush of, of water and pressure through that uh, through that timer and it's going to quickly drop the pressure on this gauge and these will just drop back down and repower the pump and let it go again so the reason I did this was like I said I'm gonna put a bigger solar panel on here and uh, that pump that the pump that's in the the lake it says it has a, a, a bypass at about hundred and ten I think it is PSI um, but I've played with that before when we had it on the other side of the land and I mean that thing was getting up to 130 140 PSI and it was actually blowing the little drip emitters out of the drip lines because it would get so much pressure and I didn't have a ton of flow. I didn't need all the water demand that that pump was pushing and it would build up the pressure and just start shooting those valves out. And um, so I eliminated that by just making the, uh, the drippers emit more water. Um, but essentially when I did that it was just flooding the trees and luckily pecan trees can handle that but you know not all trees can handle just uh, being saturated in the ground all the time so this is gonna allow me to set timers in different zones um, and then this pump no matter how much power I'm pushing to it once it hits 60 psi it's gonna cut the power and then as soon as the valve opens it's going to let the pressure go it's going to drop below 40 pumps going to kick back on and then the whole time that valve is open it's going to pump water to that section 
and um, like I said right now I'm gonna go two zones and I'm just using these simple little uh, they're like 30 bucks at Home Depot these little simple water timers that I showed you earlier in the video um, but if if we get much more complicated than we are now which I don't have a lot of plans at least for now to do but if we start getting into multiple zones I'm gonna move beyond just using these little water uh, Home Depot valves timers and I'm going to start moving into an actual control box uh, that you can run on solar and have uh, individual valves that are managed by that control box but I don't want to get into this huge complicated um, um, you know full-blown irrigation system mainly because I don't need the water for where it's at you know maybe a year I just need it to, to get things established uh, the only thing that I'm constantly going to be watering is the pecan trees, and I have really a different plan for that altogether. Um, I'm really just using this water to get the pecan trees started and rooted, and then uh, once we get the orchard established, I'm going to put a much larger, probably a flood type uh, water system on them where I just back the tractor up, uh, put in like a massive pump that just pulls out you know, water like crazy out of there and just floods the property maybe once a week and um, just do kind of like a flood irrigation mainly because all of our property is downhill and if I flood irrigate it's gonna hold the water wherever I put the levees and then any excess water just go right back into the lake so there's really uh, really not much waste uh, or evaporation other than whatever's sitting in the lake as it is but anyways that's too much information for this video uh, I'm not gonna go more into that but that's one of the reasons I wanted this simple setup and man it is working great um, I've tested this thing out multiple times today. It's one of the reasons the sun's going down and uh, every single time it's worked perfect. Uh, as you can see, we've already lost almost 10 PSI. Um, that is because I've got some various little drips. I have a little drip here, but I also have some leakage up there where I've got the splitters, and um, which is fine because normally when I'm running this and I've only got 10, 15 PSI in there, I'm not seeing any of this leakage. but once you start getting 50, 60 PSI, you're going to start seeing the weak leaks and um, and where your, your sockets and all your connections go. Uh, so I'm just going to simply pull that apart and I'm going to Teflon tape that up better and, um, you know, clamp down my connections better to to have it, you know, maintain pressure. But, uh, but either way, this at least gives the pump a way to kick off. It's not going into bypass mode, um, even if this thing kicks on every now and then. Uh, when nothing's running just to rebuild pressure, that's not a problem for me. But um, what I didn't want is this thing just running full blast, pumping water out in the middle of nowhere, um, or making pressure so high in the system that it's just, it's just going to blow out um, valves. So this is going to do it. I hope this was helpful. If you guys like any of these videos, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Like the video, comment, do the buttons, whatever the stuff YouTube's got us doing now. But... Um, uh, go ahead and keep an eye out for more videos, uh, helpful things around the farm. All right, thanks everyone.